A warm welcome to everyone to the program Fibro, Myalgia and Inflammation, a new approach for pain relief with Farzana Siraj. Friends, a woman is a complete circle of life. She's the most beautiful thing this planet has been blessed with. Talking about the uniqueness of a woman, they are unique in many ways. In fact, some health issues that are common to both men and women affect women uniquely. Today, with this quick one-hour workshop, we'll explore two widespread illnesses, fibromyalgia and inflammation amongst women. We have with us the beautiful Farzana Siraj, the founder of Orange Ray Holistic Clinic. She's an Ayanga yoga teacher certified by Sri BKS Ayanga and a yoga therapist practicing holistic therapy to wellness past 12 years. She has been treating patients with acute and chronic illness globally. Welcoming Farzana on the screen. Welcoming Farzana ji. And thank, thank you, you so you. much for agreeing to do this program. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shivani. And thank you, the Hello My Yoga team for honoring me and giving me an opportunity to talk to all the audience out here. Uh, yoga therapy is really close to my heart. I'm so happy doing this. So uh, first of all, a big thank you to all the viewers who have taken out time on this weekend from the busy schedule to come and um, hear about what actually fibromyalgia is and what is inflammation all about. I'm sure that you will go back more richer in knowledge after this one hour. So without further ado, I'm going to straight dive into my presentation and thereafter we can uh, take certain questions. So can you all see my screen? Please tell me a yes, or I'll be looking at the chat. Just tell me a yes. Let's make it a very interactive thing. I hate this boring one-sided conversations because I also want to go back and learn a little bit more, you know, more wiser from this one hour, just as you want to be. So also please ask me questions. Please tell me if you don't understand something and I'm going to be checking now and then who's gone to sleep. So I'll be asking you questions, okay? So better be bright. Okay, so what is fibromyalgia? We all have, we all today who are present, I believe that most of us either are experiencing ourselves or we know a loved one or a friend who's actually experiencing this system, these symptoms, right? So today I'm going to give you a, a different, And, you know, uh, what fibromyalgia is about. But let me tell you, this, this term came, was coined only in 1970, okay? Before that, nobody even knew what is fibromyalgia. And believe me, many of the people or doctors and the health specialists still today don't really care much about it because there's no strong evidence in this field. Hmm? So let's, you seen this small little girl over here with tears in her eyes? secluded sitting in a corner and what she's saying you can't see it but I can definitely feel it you don't understand it but I deal with it on a daily basis you think I'm lazy but I'm actually fatigued the reports are clear but I feel ill you feel sorry for me but I need your love how many of you can resonate with this how many of you let's see a show of hands yeah yes Yes, yes. I understand that because I've heard this so many times in my clinic. Believe me, it's all true. It's all true. Many times the saddest part is patients suffering from, fi fi from fibromyalgia are told you're imagining it. How can every part of your body pain? All body parts are not, haven't got spoiled. So you're just imagining it. And the more they are told like that, the more they go into their own shell. Hmm? And that's where the problems worsen. So let's go through some fibromyalgia facts and statistics. We are not going to talk in the air. We are going to talk proper science. We are going to all, whatever I'm going to tell you today is evidence-based, all taken from research. It's not top of my head. So 2.7% of the world's population is having fibromyalgia. That means one out of every 20 people. That's a lot, okay? And the saddest part is two thirds of them are misdiagnosed. 
So sometimes they are said you have rheumatology. Sometimes they are said you have arthritis. Okay, sometimes says it's an infection or it's a figment of your imagination and so on and so forth, okay? 28% of physicians who treat fibromyalgia don't even take it as a legitimate disease. I already told you that. They don't, they don't, they don't believe what is fibromyalgia. Basically, there's a joke in the medical circle that if you don't know what the diagnosis is, it's fibromyalgia. 74 people, percent of the people, they spend about $100 a month, okay, because this is an American statistic, on OTC medica medications, which means over the counter, they just keep taking painkillers. $700 a month, quite steep. 12 medical visits are made annually by only 13% of the entire fibromyalgia population. So what happens to the 87%? No diagnosis, no medicine, no cure. They are just going deep and deep into their depression. Fibromyalgia patients, because of that, have a higher chance of becoming overweight than the other people. They have 10 more times likely to commit suicide because they are spiraling into this black hole, spiraling into this black hole. 20 to 36% of patients suffer from migraine. Okay, those who have fibromyalgia. And fibromyalgia can be the underlying cause of non-allergic rhinitis. So high levels of the stress hormone cortisol increases pain in this uh, segment of women, okay? So let, let's understand what is fibromyalgia for the, those uninitiated and those who are not themselves suffering, but for, you know, coming to watch this program for somebody else. It's the second most common condition affecting your bones and muscles, the first being arthritis. Yes, it's often misdiagnosed and misunderstood. The classic symptoms are widespread muscle and joint pain and fatigue. People with fibromyalgia often feel different kinds of pains in their bodies. So some days they say it's a, it's a throbbing pain. Sometimes they feel as if something is burning inside their body. Sometimes they feel as if every part in the body is tender, as you can see in this diagram, which I put here. There's so many points which just feels, you know, painful. And along with all this, along with all this, sometimes the joints also hurt, okay? So that's why sometimes it gets misdiagnosed with arthritis. So let's look at the five uh, primary symptoms, widespread pain, as I explained, fatigue. Fatigue is a very, very common thing. These people who are being diagnosed with fibromyalgia, they know that they have fibromyalgia. They've looked up the internet, they've done all possible things, but they are going round and round. It seems like a big black hole, which has just taken it, sucked them inside. Why? They try to do exercise. They read somewhere in the internet, exercise is very good. They try to do exercise the next day, they are doubly fatigued. What do they do? They don't know what to do next day. So this is what keeps happening again and again. Fatigue is a very, very important uh, side effect of fibromyalgia. Something called the brain fog happens because the cortisol levels go so high because they don't know where, how to jump out of this abyss. There, there's something called brain fog they experience. So what is brain fog? They're not able to think clearly. Because they are not able to think clearly, they are not able to take the correct decisions. And because they are not able to take the correct decisions, they keep going round and round in this disease. Other conditions could be irritable bowel syndrome, where they keep getting loose motions, chronic fatigue, we already spoke about, migraine. There's something called the painful bladder syndrome, where when you try to pass urine, you feel a pain in your bladder, okay? You feel a pain in your vaginal area. Then there's something called the TMJ, which is this part of your jaw. This can pain. This happens. I think we have lost Farzana. IT depression. Uh, Farzana, I think there is a technical glitch at your end. Uh, we are losing you in between. Okay. Is it is it better now? Uh, while I'm talking or continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is good. It is good. Now. Okay, fine. And of course, uh, the depression part. So now let's understand yeah. more scientifically. Excuse me to interrupt. Can you please go back to the slide again? The previous slide. Sure. 
Yes. We lost you in between. Can you please continue from temporomandibular and then then go to agni? Okay. So fine. Yeah. So the TMJ, as I explained to you, is the pain in the jaw. Okay. Then it is anxiety, depression, and then we have something called the tachycardia syndrome, which is connected to a heart. So we keep having these. you know beats in the heart where your heart is going thak 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 or you feel you know you have these um, uh, uh, pain attacks and stuff like that and one day you will feel oh my god i am today i'm feeling like a million bucks and the next day all over again it starts right so you just feel that you know like it was just okay i was kind of conned by this whole thing and then you start feeling hopeless you start feeling dismay okay so that is what happens thank you so much yeah my my pleasure so now let's look at what science says so science keeps evolving you know science keeps changing so we have a joke in alternative medicine where we say alternative medicine is 5000 years old ayurveda is 5000 years old yoga is 5000 years old but uh, modern medicine it's only a couple of thousand years old and it's a little baby you know and a baby keeps changing stance is growing so western medicine first said fibromyalgia is because of your central nervous system so i'm going to read it out for you from here fibromyalgia is a neurological disease affecting a person's sensory processing system that's your central nervous system which is called the cns okay and studies had shown then that fibromyalgia what happens is what is your cns it consists of your uh, brain your brain stem and your spinal cord so whatever messages are passed through your spinal cord to the brain your brain is over processing them okay so suppose if it is a, if i could say something it is on a scale of 2 your brain thinks it is on a scale of 8 that was the that was the uh, uh, assessment then that was a fact then which is which is most of the doctors believe that today but there has been some uh, path breaking um, research done in london okay and that's been done in the kings institute london and what they have come up with is that fibromyalgia is now considered as an autoimmune disorder so what is autoimmune disorder autoimmune disorder in a very plain way is your own immunity your own immune response goes against you that means you are creating the disease out of you it's not something uh, which you have you know uh, got infected with from someone else or it's genetic you have created this and how have you created this because your immune response has been overactive what was supposed to come and help you your immune response it's attacking your own cells and tissues okay now let's hear, read this i would give you all, all about some 30 seconds to read it's a quote by dr david anderson uh he is the primary investigator in kings college london and this is what he has said the implications of this study are profound establishing that fibromyalgia is an autoimmune disorder will transform how we view the condition and should pave the way for more effective treatments for the millions of people affected our work has uncovered a whole new area of therapeutic options and should give real hope to fibromyalgia patients previous exploration of therapies has been hampered by a limited understanding of the illness this should now change treatment for fibromyalgia is focused on gentle aerobic exercises as well as drug and psychological therapies designed to manage pain although these have proven ineffective in most patients and have left behind an enormous unmet clinical need please again read have left behind an enormous unmet clinical need that means we are still struggling how to treat this whole thing now just to uh, explain to you how our neurological systems basically work and how our nervous systems basically work so basically we have the central nervous system okay which as i explained to you has the brain and the spinal cord along with that we have something called the peripheral nervous system now what is the job of the peripheral nervous system is basically takes the messages from the rest of the body and gives it to the central nervous system and says okay hey you process it now now this peripheral nervous system is again divided into two somatic nervous system and the autonomic it's very simple so autonomic as the way the name suggests it's autonomous it does things on its own for example your heart beats you don't try and beat your heart it just happens on its own that's done by your ans your pupils dilate you keep flickering your eyelids all that happens by the ans and what does the somatic nervous system do 
any movement which you do voluntarily, your muscle, your hand movement, your leg movement, anything, your diaphragmatic movement, when you do it on purpose, it is the somatic nervous system. Now here comes the catch. The autonomic system is again divided into two. So one is the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic. Now there is no bad guy, good guy. We need both the guys, okay? So the sympathetic nervous, is, nervous system is responsible for the flight or fight response. Now I'll explain to you what is fight or flight. Let's say we are all sitting in a room and there is a fire, okay? And we all need to run. Obviously, we want to run. So let's say in the room, there are some people who have a back problem, some who can hardly walk in a knee problem. But when the fire is there, they're not going to say, oh, my knees are hurting, so I don't think I can run. Everybody is going to run. How? What happened? The sympathetic nervous system came into action and it sent the message to the brain that, look, you got to run now. There is danger here. So what did the brain do? It shut down all the other systems in the body. That could be your uh, 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 reproductive system. It could be your digestive system, et cetera, et cetera. It shut down all systems, took that energy and gave it to the legs. Now run, because the brain perceived a danger. Now everybody ran and went off, became safe. Imagine if there was a fire every two minutes in the room you are living in. Won't you get exhausted by the end of the day? How many times can I run? The brain is setting an alarm. Hey, it's emergency. Come on, shut down, shut down. And cortisol is produced. And that is why we burn out and we have all kinds of problems. So that is the time we need to activate the parasympathetic nervous system and balance this both. It's not that the sympathetic nervous system is not a good thing. It is a good thing. We need it when we want to do some dynamic actions, when we want to take some important decisions, when we have to really be active. But the rest and digest, which is a function of the parasympathetic nervous system, is also very, very important. So that is something we require to do. You guys can hear me? Just yeah, check we, can, yeah? we can hear you. It's just that some technical glitch happened. Because of that, we lost your presentation. So can you go back and share the screen again? Okay, sure, sure. Sorry about this stuff. Okay, can you guys see it again? Yes, yes. Thank, thank, thank. Okay, so so this is what it is. So I just wanted to go a little bit of science because we are you are all very aware, very knowledgeable people, and we need to give them some stuff which is like, uh, you know, for them to understand and chew upon. Now I'd love want to you keep all this information in mind, and let's now come to yoga. We all have heard so much about yoga. We all think, okay, doing yoga is great for prevention. You'll feel calm, you'll feel happy, you'll get flexibility. But is that all that is for yoga? Is a question we need to ask. Yoga is a 5,000 year old science. No pharma companies have endorsed it. There have been no ads for it. Nobody has spent millions of dollars and it's still here to stay and it's still thriving and throbbing. Why? Because of its efficacy. And how is it going to be so effective for us? That's what we are going to see in today's presentation. So yoga, we all know, is an ancient mind and body practice, combi uh, uh, combines physical postures, breathing techniques, relaxation, and meditation. So what is yoga therapy now? What is the difference between yoga and yoga therapy, right? So yoga therapy is the process of empowering individuals to progress towards improved health and well-being through the application and the teachings and the practices of yoga. Now, this term yoga therapy was coined by Swami Kualyananda okay, in the 1920s, because he believed that we could measure the physical and the physiological changes which occurred during yoga practices. And that's how research into the field of yoga started. People started actually measuring that because what you measure is for sure, okay? You can actually account for that. So after all this started happening, a very, very popular cardiologist in USA, his name is Dr. Dean Ornish. You all would have heard about Dr. Dean Ornish's modules or Dean Ornish's programs. He realized the potential of yoga and he started tapping into this potential to treat his patients, people who had cardiac issues. And it became such a hit that the National Health Service, you know, which is a you know, funded organization, the healthcare system of England, adopted it. And I want to tell you this from my personal experience, though we are 
we uh, india is a mother of yoga given birth to yoga but the amount of yoga therapy which is practiced in uk china hong kong is far more than what is done in india it's a shame but yes it is done there so that is something we must also actually try and adopt these practices and not keep being doubting thomases all the time so now okay fine so yoga is a mind body practice okay granted how will it help fibromyalgia what is it going to do to fibromyalgia patients so yoga is an excellent tool which can enrich modern medicine we are not here to replace anything modern medicine is very very vital very very important but we can always support modern medicine so what can yoga do remember remember the diagram we spoke about the uh, central nervous system and how we have the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic now yoga balances these two symptoms, uh, systems and this balance is something what is called homeostasis okay so homeostasis is achieved when you practice yoga on a regular thing now here again comes the question that people ask me i am already in a yoga class ma'am but i still have pain i'm still having fibromyalgia what's the answer to that so yoga when it started it had 84 lakh asanas 84 lakh today we are only doing 84 so i tell my patients yoga is like a chemist shop all the medicine in a chemist shop are very good somebody or the other is always using them but can one single person use all those medicines answers please answers please yes can a single person use all those medicines no no so what do we do who is good so the doctor prescribes that no you need to go have this medicine we take a prescription go to the pharmacist and say please give me this one and i will take this one but where yoga is concerned everybody doles out everything to everyone not taking into account their history not taking into account their body type not taking into account their moods their upbringing their other parameters so that's where the problem lies and then we blame yoga i did yoga i had a back problem i did yoga but my diabetes didn't go it's not going to go unless you take it for a specific reason and from somebody who knows their job so i'd like to quote here uh, padma bhushan dr ramamurthy he is a great neurosurgeon and he says yoga reorients functional hierarchy of the entire nervous system he has noted that yoga not only benefits the cardiovascular respiratory digestive endocrine immune system and brings about biochemical changes in the yoga practitioners what is a biochemical change chemicals which are released in your body keep changing because of yoga what are these chemicals these are the hormones right so this is what yoga can do a western academician a western physician is saying this so now let's bust some myths of yoga so yoga is a religious practice yes or no guys come on come on yes or no 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 so what is it it is i only not. heard one no that means the others think it is a religious practice a way of life sorry yoga. come again jan yoga is a way of life it's a way absolutely. of absolutely bingo it's a way of life it's a way of life yes yes and so is hinduism okay so yoga may be a philosophy but it's not scientific is it true is it scientific or not scientific it is scientific it is scientific how can we say that because there there are targeted practice for specific problems right but how do we know that i have had so? a personal experience <laughs> okay great so i will definitely believe you but to, there is lots and lots of research done on yoga i am also doing my phd almost on the final stages of phd so there's lots of and my phd is in yoga so let me tell you there's lots of research in yoga those who are very interested can actually go up the internet and look at it so it's not just a philosophy but it is proven scientifically now yoga therapy is not relevant in the present day it was okay when those loin clad people were sitting in on the himalayas and doing meditation it's not no longer relevant anybody says agrees or doesn't agree no <laughs> it is relevant yes especially in this time when mental health has become a big big thing right yes, yes. 
So yoga therapy is only a physical exercise. How many people believe that yoga therapy is just asana? No. No, no, no. no it's not. There's much more. There are eight steps. We'll talk about it someday, another day. Modern medicine doesn't, doesn't support yoga therapy. Does it or doesn't it? It depends where you are, doesn't it? Here in the UK, we don't get that much support for it. It's only because I belong to a parampai in India that I know about it and that I use it. Fantastic. So see, we are so much more luckier and more privileged that we have it here. But the sad part is we don't use it enough. So thanks for that, Jen. So yoga therapy can be done in group settings. This is my favorite myth. Okay. So tell me, can yoga therapy done in group settings? No. No. We already spoke about that. Yeah. It's one-on-one -on -one and completely customized. It should be that way. Otherwise, it's not sure to work. Right. Okay. Can yoga therapy be learned by self-help books and videos? No, no, Mr. Google? No, 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 no. no? Absolutely no. Let's not try and save pennies over there because we are going to be losing a lot of pounds if we do that, right? So absolutely no. It requires a lot of time and money. No. Yes? No. Some time, obviously, and some money, yeah? Because there's no free lunch. There's no free lunch, okay? And if there was a free lunch, believe me, we wouldn't appreciate it. We always, we always keep our Louis Vuitton bags very carefully, right? Because we pay so much for it, right? But if it comes free, we are not going to appreciate it. So that's how it is. So I am already doing yoga, but it hasn't helped me. This is something I already addressed in the beginning of the presentation. It's not helped you because you've not taken proper guidance from a proper channel or a proper source. Okay. Okay, now let's move on to another dimension. Remember this whole presentation is all about a holistic perception. I'm not selling yoga therapy over here at all. I'm giving you a solution for fibromyalgia and we cannot ignore the power of food because we are what we eat. So I'm just, there is, now let's come to inflammation, okay? Yoga, um, fibromyalgia and inflammation go hand in hand. We've already proved that fibromyalgia is an autoimmune disease see that the crp the reactive protein is not too high but still the person is go back we lost you for a couple of seconds sorry sorry okay uh, is this better yeah yeah so uh, going back to uh, inflammation uh, yeah. We already spoke about uh, uh, that fibromyalgia is a cause of, is an autoimmune uh, disease. And in any autoimmune response, the inflammation markers are most of the time raised. Sometimes when we take a blood test, the CRP levels are not so high, but that person tells you all the symptoms which are belonging to fibromyalgia and we have to believe the patient, okay? So every time we cannot correlate the fine clinical findings with what the patient is saying, but we have to believe. So these are some of the things you should not eat. Anti-inflammatory. Chocolate, dark chocolate. I think Farzana, we again lost you. I'm so uh, sorry. What a pain this is. I don't know. Okay. So what we are doing is we are we are not making you co-host. We are removing that permission. Okay. And still you can share the uh, presentation. We are just take changing the technical part of it. Okay. So that you can... I just continue to share the way I was doing. Is that how I do? Yes. Now you can see the share screen option. Yeah, I did. Yes. Yes. You can see my screen. Yes, we can. Okay, great. Okay, so um, so we were here. So anti-inflammatory food is something we must all start, those who are experiencing pain, okay? Because this is something which is really going to help you remove the swelling, the remove the tender points which you feel. So omega-3, must add, vitamin C, must add, vitamin E, lots of fruits, vegetables, chocolate, dark chocolate we are talking about. Again, remember that just because I'm saying chocolate is doesn't mean you're going to eat one whole slab of chocolate. Okay, and then like you said so, no. Olive oil, use, uh, you cook your food in olive oil. What I've not mentioned is pure ghee is very, very good. Please use pure ghee in cooking. And tea, everything in limitation, okay? Prebiotics and probiotics. Everybody knows what are probiotics. These are the friendly 
bacteria in our gut, which helps to break down our food, which addresses gut issues, which helps us to uh, absorb all the uh, nutrients in the food. What is the prebiotic? Prebiotic is the food for probiotic. Okay, so that's that. What you should not do, excessive calorie intake, too much of carbohydrates, that is rice and chapatis and stuff like that. Trans fatty acids, what are trans fatty acids? This is a bad acid, which is there in all processed food and all the vegetable oils, what we eat. Please do not have those oils, use cold uh, pressed oils. And saturated fatty acids are there in those processed cheese and you know all kinds of uh, uh, maida stuff and stuff like that. So that is something we need to avoid. Okay, so now let's go into the key takeaways here quickly, okay? So we already spoke about the central nervous system controlling all the things and how the central nervous system gets the message from your sympathetic nervous system and how, every, how the stress is induced. We spoke about the two branches, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system, okay? And how yoga brings a balance in both and that's what creates homeostasis. Homeostasis basically means an ideal internal environment we all should have. Okay, then autoimmune disease occurs because the body's natural defense system is thinking that we are the enemies ourselves, and that's when we start harming our own selves. Okay, then uh, the increased inflammatory markers may be associated with mental health conditions. That's how inflammation is there, and that's how stress is also there. Uh, we also need to understand that certain psychiatric conditions also increase inflammation markers, which in turn can create more pain and it goes on. You know, it's a vicious cycle. An improvement in mood is associated with a reduction in inflammation. Very important point. And yoga therapy is great when it improves your mood. Remember biochemical changes? Yeah. Uh, current evidence suggests that inflammation may cause depression. Lifestyle risk factors for depression includes physical inactivity, low vitamin D3 levels, stress, trauma, poor diet. These are all associated with inflammation. Now I want to ask you something over here, guys. Back to you. Do you at this point think, whatever you have heard now, till now, that we require a holistic treatment for fibromyalgia? or just modern medicine is fine? Definitely holistic. Definitely holistic? Only one person? Yes. We agree on it. Everybody agrees on it? Why? Yeah, yeah. why, why, why? We need to know why. Okay. Medicine, medicines okay. alone can have a lot of side effects also, right? Absolutely, yes. absolutely. After that, we need, we need to include yoga along with medication. Fantastic. And, and, correct. And also medicine uh, cannot give a short, short solution to it. Like it, it can treat the symptoms maybe, you know. But Very it valid point. Cure Very it. Point. Yeah. So, so we have so, to, correct. Absolutely, correct. So, so when you say holistic, what do you mean by holistic? So we spoke to, yeah. Yeah, so that it doesn't come back again. We are just out of it completely. Okay. Very good. But uh, what do you and physically? Holistically, I mean, you know, uh, providing support to the person who's suffering at physical and also at the mental level. You know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's not just through the practice, but also the nutrition is required a better strong mental state state of mind is required to deal with it because it's a process it's not a one day job so to go through Absolutely. that process yeah so uh, that's yeah. that's what means holistic for me perfect perfect very well said yes Can I very just well say here also that with fibromyalgia a lot of fibromyalgics actually have multiple chemical sensitivities and therefore will react to drug therapy and it will yeah. make symptoms worse Absolutely, correct. So the answer is because the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. I've taken a quote from Aristotle. What does it mean? That if you just, if every doctor just starts looking at one aspect of a person, then we are not addressing the whole because the whole, that means if I am suffering, I, I am not just my digestive system. I am not just my reproductive system. I'm not just my low back or I'm not just my head. I am me and all of these parts of me 
totally is me and this total me is far bigger than the sum of all these parts and that is why we need to address me what i am feeling how i am feeling what is my history what is my environment what kind of job do i do what kind of relationships do i have what is my thinking process what do i eat what do i what time do i sleep how is my poop what how much water do i drink how, how has my childhood been so many things we need to consider yes so that is why we need a holistic perspective to this so people suffering from autoimmune disorders need to shift their fixation away from the body to something that is deeper something that is unchanging no matter whether you are happy or sad in pain or not in pain with or without a diagnosis there is something unchanging in each of us and that is fundamentally our awareness and that's where we all need to meet and start from there and then build yes that's true not not giving too much attention to like everything is in a path thing right like in the end even especially for people who are in constant pain of suffering you know and even for people who are constantly indulged in their materialistic life or whatever like we have to the i i think that that is the first door we have to take them away from that and to the center you know like there's much more to us absolutely so once we make the person realize that this is just a phase and it will go we first give them hope then give them the courage to take that first step and then hand hold them through the whole thing and before you realize the person would have jumped out of that abyss and that's the way to go and that's how we treat people because otherwise they just feel i have told my family my now my family thinks i'm lazy my family thinks i've just become a couch potato i don't want to do anything i'm just a no gooder my friend thinks she's such a bore doctors thinks she's over exaggerating where do i go where do i go right yes so now i'm ready for your questions guys please shoot Can I just say I I first was diagnosed with fibromyalgia um when I was in my early 20s and I really didn't get a handle on it and know how to deal with it because I was fobbed off like everybody with fibromyalgia you know oh there's either nothing wrong with you they made you feel like you were some kind of um hypochondriac you know there was nothing wrong and it because it people can't see it it it's something you have to deal with very much on your own and it can be incredibly mentally stressful but i found yoga again when i was older and i that coinciding with me becoming vegan really has put paid to a lot of my symptoms it really has um but not i'm not just doing asana practice i do the whole yoga is my way of life and it has it's done amazing things i've got to say and i've studied yoga therapy as well um which it, once you know how everything works all about your nervous system and everything it all becomes clearer and when it when you're not made to feel like you're a um a fraud or a hypochondriac then you can deal with it better absolutely absolutely because you can identify you can say right this is the problem and then get on with it true absolutely it's, it's been an absolute joy the yoga has really helped me beyond measure thanks that thanks for sharing that insight that's really nice i'm sure a lot of people will get a lot of courage from that yes anybody else prasanna i wanted to know that uh, hi rozat hi hi prasanna that uh, group therapy yoga if i am doing yoga only for general well being and general strengthening it even then group yoga therapy is not good see again uh, i'll tell you what because um, uh, people are doing these yoga classes right mm -hmm. now just think about it see for example uh, when we like it's like going to a class where you... yeah 
we have again lost her lost yes. for someone fazana we lost you, you for... sorry now can you hear me yes, yes. yeah so so let's say a, a trainer is making you do some exercise okay let's say a group of 20 people okay and for fitness you are going for yoga so let's say you have a week back and they make you do something strenuous don't you think even if it is yoga you may end up by worsening the problem true possible right so that's the whole idea but we try to do it group classes because we don't want to spend money but okay for at least for that it is acceptable but if you really having a problem problem which you want to address it it absolutely makes no sense when you are doing a group because it cannot so your voice is breaking with fibromyalgia oh okay. sorry again yeah yeah if you take two people with fibromyalgia both have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia itself the therapy cannot be same because they will be thinking differently their diets will be different the family backgrounds are different how are you going to treat them same got it yeah <laughs> hi that's true uh, i just wanted to get your opinion on this like how do you deal with the expectation of people when they come for therapy or any you know classes for any specific ailment uh it, it's like you know now everything is objective driven right i mean and they they have a time window they want they want to see a result in a certain period of time window like you know so they say okay so if i do th these classes the how many classes will it take to overcome this this problem or you know then how, how what is like how do you deal with that sure. stress good like, question so uh, basically when we first when i do a consultation with my client we understand exactly what their problem is i need sometimes i need to go into the deep history because you can feel the problem right so we once i i did the entire initial assessment i kind of give them i make certain things very very clear with them so i tell them this treatment is not i'm not the only one who's treating you it's a partnership it's a partnership between you and me because i can only guide you you got to walk the path if you don't walk the path i can't help you so they get that very clear from day one because unlike medicines which the doctor just gives you and then is going to show its result temporarily we are looking at a change and transformation takes time another thing which i tell them which is my favorite is i say you know what god also takes 9 months to get a baby so give me some time if you want to talk yes. right so yeah. then once i tell that they actually understand that i mean business and then we give them a a time frame a rough time frame obviously there are a lot of factors it's not like yes, if i say 3 months it cannot be bang 3 months okay they're going to be fine right but in that much time they have been with me they have they have seen that the life has completely changed not only for what they have come to me so i always say in, in yoga therapy it's buy one take three free okay because your life changes not only every everything about your changes you no longer are the same person if you're following properly so then they see the value add what they have you know in this entire thing and they they never ever question me that okay you said this time and what happened because we always achieve our target before that but as i said they understand they come on my wavelength and it's a partnership and you know it's not like a deal or that okay you told me it's not like that they know that they have got much more than they bargained for thank you yeah my pleasure actually one of my patients was here but i can't see her now i don't know whether she's there mm, shabina are you there yeah she's there she's there mm. so yes, is the video is the video closed right. or is it on no the video is on shabina I'll spotlight you i'll i'll can see you later i'll i have spotlighted her hi shabina welcome hi ma'am thank you <laughs> my pleasure shabina i would request you say a few words you just gave me a testimonial some days back on practo yeah, and yeah. Uh, i don't want you to discuss about what you came to me for because that's our client confidentiality but if you just would like to say something about what you experienced during the treatment that would be nice yeah i was going to uh, tell that in this uh, meeting thank you sir um, yeah uh, basically uh, if uh, other people are listening i had a very severe back pain 
my uh, it was a uh, what do you call it? it's a sciatica pain the radiating pain from my back it used to radiate till my toes and my feet so it was a very bad uh, pain when i met miss farzana i told her about my problem and uh, in the first meeting i just told her my problem and second meeting she started asking me about my personal issue like if i have any emotions if i have any stress in life so i opened out whatever i felt with her i had some um, problems like i had lost my mother and i was going i was having a lot of stress so she initially told me to i mean she said she's going to stop a uh, treatment about my pain she just wanted me to heal from within so her main prospect was that i have to get the stress out of my mind out of my heart then she said automatically with her help and with her therapies i will get out of i mean i will get rid of the pain so what ma'am was going to say is she does not just uh, prescribe the same kind of uh, treatments or uh, she first understands the problem she understands the family background she understand what kind of stress we are facing so she helped me a lot to you know overcome the stress more than this i liked the way she spoke to me i mean like i opened out my problems to her you know i mean it was really um, i should say i mean i'm very thankful to her thank you shabina uh, i'd also like to mention here that you had also a cervical problem not only low back right yeah, a cervical yeah. problem yeah yeah yes yes so both of those the things uh, are you happy now your your pain is gone yeah yeah pain is gone and um, i mean with your help i'm trying to come out of my stress also that is more important <laughs> thanks and just for the thing shabina our uh, treatment has been done online just to tell the viewer so we don't even really need the patient to be here. shabina stays in dubai yeah so yeah so just wanted to thank shabina thanks so much for this most welcome most welcome my pleasure okay so guys any other questions Uh, no i just want to thank you and Sh miss shabina for sharing the story thank you so much thank you so i think there are no more questions shivani so do you think we can wrap up or you would like to have do something else we do not have any questions it seems that we have a brilliant audience <laughs> <laughs> friends thank you so much for attending this program but let me tell you something this is just a tip of the iceberg what farzana shared today is just a tip of the iceberg she believes in educating and spreading awareness to address the root cause of health issues and therefore we are soon coming up with a capsule program specifically on fibromyalgia and inflammation are you in for it can i have thumbs up Thank you, Mamta. Thank you, Devyani. Thank you, Ankita. Thank you, Yan. Thank you. Thank you, team. Thank you. So, moving ahead. So, the program which I'm discussing, we are still working on it, and this program will have eight hours digital session, but a month long hand holding to the people who want to study holistic healing of fibromyalgia and inflammation for themselves or for their family members, friends, or clients. so i request to stay tuned for more updates on this program with orange ray and hello my yoga we'll be soon coming up with a brilliant program curated by farzana itself for all the people out there who want to learn more about holistic healing thank, thank you, you so much thank you so much and we'll end the session here thank you so much shivani thanks again for this opportunity it was wonderful to spend time with you guys and looking forward to the next capsule sure thank you thank you